Today on Cabela's Deer Gear TV, we're going to talk about tracking deer and the things you can do to help recover your harvest. From interpreting the color of the blood, to getting help from some unexpected friends. All this and more here on Cabela's Deer Gear TV. You know, you can go online, you can watch every TV show, you can read every article in the world about tracking, and there's a few things that will be consistent, but a lot of people have different theories and different beliefs about it. Um, the biggest thing is the longer you wait, probably the better you are. Now, that's not always possible if you're trying to save the meat. Um, some hunting that is done is just in very warm conditions, and um, you tend to get more antsy. I see more mistakes made when it's warm because people want to get out there because they want to save that fine meat, and you jump them, and then you never recover them. So rule of thumb for me, and I break my own rule, unfortunately, on occasion, is you know give them a couple hours if there's any question at all. I think that the more I hunt, the more that I realize that um, things will happen the way they're supposed to happen. You can make the most absolute perfect shot and think that that deer is going to be dead 25 yards inside that brush line and you get there and he's gone. And then I've seen those instances where a shot has been less than optimal and the deer die right in front of you. I mean, it's just amazing to look at how that goes down. And because of that, a person has to be prepared and understand the importance of how to track a deer when to not track the deer, when to let him lay, and when, and when to call for help. When it comes to tracking, you can spend a lot of hours on your hands and knees looking for any kind of sign that will help you recover your deer. But you can make some mistakes along the way if you're not careful. Wade and his crew still learn something new every time they go out in search of a deer, and they're going to share with you some of the biggest mistakes people make and how you can avoid bumping a deer and losing him forever. You know, when it comes to tracking a deer, the biggest advice, and I, I break it my own self, that I could give is anybody is give it time, especially in an archery situation, give it time. Uh, back out of there quietly, uh, go sit down, eat a sandwich, drive into town, come back with a fresh mind, even if it's overnight, uh, and then start your search. Don't immediately go plowing into the woods right after a shot. You know, after you make your shot, tracking the deer is where you really start putting together the information if you don't have a camera to look back on to see your shot placement. The arrow or the area that you're starting to track in gives you a lot of information to, to really understand what's going on with that deer. Take it slow. You don't really want a bunch of people in there stomping around, especially getting out in front of you trying to track. While you're tracking blood, especially if it's not bleeding very good, if there's just a drop here to drop there, if somebody steps on one of them drops walking in front of you and smears it or, or just takes it off the, the leaf or the ground, you're not gonna find it. So take your time, go slow, don't get in a hurry. When you're looking at blood, you can kind of identify pretty close to where that deer's been hit. You know, if you're seeing uh, the brighter blood, that's what you're wanting to see, the brighter red blood that looks like, you know, come from the heart or from the lungs. Uh, a lot of times, lung blood will have some bubbles in it, you know, a little bit of bubbled up stuff. Uh, when you start getting into that dark blood, that's when you need to start thinking about backing out because that's usually liver hit back too far. Uh, that, that's, that's not something that's good to see. You know, don't, don't always mean that you're not going to find them, but you, you want to identify that blood. Look at your arrow if you shoot him with an arrow. Uh, see what kind of blood zone it is. Is there a lot of blood? Is there just a little bit of blood? You really want to see that bright red blood on that arrow. That's when you know you made a good shot. If you're in soft ground, Pick up them tracks. You know, you can, you can tell running tracks from walking tracks. Fresh dirt kicked up, you know, if it's not muddy, if it's just dirt, fresh dirt getting kicked up, you know that's a fresh track. May not be the right track, but at least it's kind of giving you something to go on. Deer like to go in a thick spot and bed up. I mean, that's where, especially if they know they're, they're gonna expire soon, they will normally try to get in the thickest stuff they can and just bed down and I guess, I, I don't know what they're thinking. They're thinking, you know, if I lay here long enough, I'm gonna heal up or, or what it is. Um, if you find them in the open, then I mean, they're just, they were running and died while they were running. But most of the time, look in them thick areas, the, the thickest stuff you can find. 
Deer Gear is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Yamaha's proven off-road ATVs and side-by-side -side vehicles. Garmin Zero Bowsight. Leave the guesswork behind. We know if you found one crappie, you may have found a thousand. We know the joy of getting your boots back in the mud. We know the journey can be more rewarding than the destination. We know the great outdoors. We love the great outdoors. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Stop by today for huge savings on the gear you need and the brand you trust. Plus, free two-day shipping at BassPro.com and Cabela's.com. How do you aim a 36-yard shot with a 30-yard fixed pin at a 15-degree angle with a 7-inch holdover without moving a single pin? Easy. You get one of these. Zero. The auto-ranging digital bow sight from Garmin. We've been talking about tracking in this episode. We've already gone over following a blood trail and what the color of the blood can mean. When tracking for blood, the track may go cold and in some cases that deer lives, but in others, you end up having to rely on birds and other signs to help you locate and solve the mystery of a wounded deer. Let's look back at a hunt from 2015 and the lessons learned from Liz Dugans of Cabela's first archery hunt. I think it's perfect in the heart. I think it's perfect okay. in the heart. <laughs> Do you think so? <laughs> so? I think that's perfect in the heart. Ooh, talk about heart. <laughs> I was like, gonna jump out of my chest. <laughs> I tell you right now. Ooh. I was sitting over here going. I didn't think he was coming back around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. You know, we, we came back, we ate, we watched the footage. Um, after seeing the footage, I thought, ah, it's not as perfect as I thought. It's back a little bit, maybe a little low. We ate, gave that deer a lot of time, rain's coming in, made the decision to go out and start tracking in the dark, you know, for it. And we're on our hands and knees, lights are digging around. You can see the track on the, on the GPS. We're working back and forth in there. And, the deer kind of goes down into this little bedding area that we basically never go in and then he come back up out of it and he's on the edge of a Sinisa flat and you can imagine the thoughts in the team's mind and I, I know what Liz is going through that there's nothing that I'm going to say that's going to be, you know, that's going to clear anything up. Hold right there, some in it. She can see it shine. We saw one last drop, and then it opened up into just a, a field of just like brush. That's about waist high. Morale was down for sure, because <laughs> we knew if he laid down in that, it'd take us all night to try and find him. Within all that, she can't see. But then when, when we got out to that open area with all the shrubs, I was like, this is not good. <laughs> Are you sure? Now I'm getting really nervous. <laughs> you know, at this point, it, it, it's a couple days um, after, you know, Liz's, Liz's shot. And, you know, as you go back and you, and you keep looking, you're down to, to the hope of the buzzard. You kind of start to resign yourself to the fact that, hey, you know, it just isn't gonna happen. Just, I'm sorry, just not gonna happen. But sometimes, those little black birds in the sky, like I said before in the past, they're as pretty as a Victoria's Secrets model at times, and this is one of those times. 
This is our last blood that we found right here at this 003. We're three tenths of a mile away from it right now. You can see all of my personal tracks, and we'll keep in mind there's four of us walking around in there looking. Now, we eased up just now, saw a bunch of buzzard right across the fence line. We're probably uh, a half a mile from where we took the shot now. Flies and buzzards and what we're looking for behind these trees right over here. <laughs> Miss Liz is gonna be pretty excited when she sees this. I felt like all along she had made a great shot. Now we saw buzzards all up in those trees flying around, but when we got down there, we couldn't see any buzzards. But several times now, those flies back there have led me to deer and you can see them in some of these areas. And when you get down in there, they're, they're bumping around. Now this deer here, is Miss Liz Dugan's first buck ever with an archery. This just shows you that perhaps Wade and the team went in a bit early that first night, but persistence, mapping, and keeping an open mind can help you recover your deer at times. Using mapping features on GPS units can really help you determine the lay of the land and where deer could have gone, as well as telling you where you've searched and where you've not searched, like we just saw with Liz's hunt. Recent innovations at Garmin even now have GPS tracking devices that let you communicate with others even when there is no cell signal. Let's hear from Garmin's Rehan Nana on that now. So you can kind of see we're just out here um, pretty far in the middle of nowhere and one of the things is we lost cell service and so you know we've been uh, using the inReach back and forth but I think that this is just a prime example of you know being able to have the technology to be in contact with people. The inReach, I've got the inReach mini, tiny little device, I call it the Mighty Mouse. It's a two-way SMS communication device that works on Iridium satellite and so when you're in an area like this that's outside of cell service you still have the ability to get in contact with let's say camp or you know loved ones back home and then you have the SOS capability as well you know, it's got everything that, you know, it's got weather forecasting, it's got tracking, it pairs into your cell phone for Bluetooth mapping capabilities. And, you know, you have the InReach Explorer, which is a larger unit that has screen mapping, but this mini, it Bluetooths into your cell phone. So if you want to, you can throw that thing in your pack and still navigate off your cell phone based on the EarthMate app. Check out the InReach Mini and all of Garmin's handheld GPS devices at Garmin.com. Deer Gear is brought to you by Performance Center by Smith & Wesson. Performance when it matters most. Hi Viz. See what you've been missing. Thompson Center. America's master gun maker. Stealth Cam. Proven. The all new Yamaha Wolverine X2. With a compact chassis, perfect for exploring tight technical terrain. An ultra quiet and smooth 850 class twin cylinder engine. And next level versatility with a 600 pound dumping cargo bed. No other side by side delivers this level of proven off road performance. The all new Wolverine X2 from Yamaha. those with an insatiable desire to pursue all Mother Nature has to offer. Thompson Center delivers the ultimate in versatility with the interchangeable TC Encore Pro Hunter, giving shooters over 50 configurations including handgun, rifle, shotgun, and muzzle loader. The TC Encore Pro Hunter, one gun to chase all your dreams. Even the best shots at the moment you take them often prove to be not what you think they are after things have settled down. That's why taking time and working through all the data that is in front of you will help you recover a deer after a shot. A good example of this is from a recent hunt where Wade was hunting in a tree stand that backed up to a creek. After making a solid shot and giving the deer time, the tracking commenced. I mean, the shot just felt great. Everything about the whole scenario to me, uh, maybe a little back, but you know, up and down looked great. Um, you know, immediately went down, found the arrow. I mean, it's just covered in blood. Did a little bit of light tracking for about a hundred yards on him. Great blood trail. Climbed up on the, you know, the 
side of a hill there and the blood started getting weaker we kind of backed out and uh, then came back after dark and looked again and, and we found uh, a spot about 100 yards up from there where it looks like the deer just stood it's the next morning now you know we tracked last night till probably 11 11 30 looking at all the obvious stuff there's lots of creeks lots of ponds in here the deer could easily be in them there's lots of little gullies he could be down in i mean we fully feel like this deer has expired um, and you know but we're gonna keep looking we brought in some help as as we like to do that's the best thing you can do on, on a situation like this where you've lost the blood my heart tells me this deer's dead nearby and we just didn't find him. It could be in that big creek right there that's deep. Uh, it could be in this pond behind us. I mean, he could just be laid out there in the brush and we just, we just didn't find him last night. So uh, we're going to go give it a good all day look today and see what we can find. You know, in a hunting situation, you put tons of time in, everything's going great. You've had a great hunt. You, you, you make a shot, you feel like the shot's good, you begin the track. You get up the next day, you spend minutes that turn into hours, that turn into more hours and more manpower, and, and you don't have an answer. A couple days later, though, the phone rings, the pictures start coming in, and, and the deer, well, basically, here's another part of the story. There was a big dirt slide, and the dirt had just sloughed off down into the creek, and it looked like something had fallen right there. But what are you gonna do? I mean. We thought maybe, maybe there's a shot that's where he died, but we didn't really think so. We look everywhere. Usually in this country, buzzards will get on a deer if it dies and you can find it relatively quick. We watch for buzzards all day. And then the next day, we look back at the water and there the deer is floating. So what happened was, is the deer goes off the bank, he falls in the water, he sinks to the bottom when he dies. We had no idea. I mean, we would have had to like drag it to find him. I mean, you know, it's six feet, five feet, four feet deep all through there. There was no sign of it at all. We all looked in that water and thought to ourselves, it could be there, but we really didn't think it really was. And then when it floats up right there, it's like, boom, yeah, that mud slide or that dirt slide when it slid down into the water, that deer fell off that, it floated up and we were able to find it, but it's a great lesson. When tracking, you tend to cover a lot of ground, and one way we do that is with our Yamaha side-by-sides. Whether we need to go to camp to look at the footage or head to another end of the property where we think the deer may have gone, our Yamahas get us where we're going, and we get there safely thanks to these tips. I think a lot of people overlook is, you know, being prepared on their ATVs and side-by-sides. Uh, gloves, you know, it's going to help protect your hands from objects flying up. Same situation for your eyes. You know, you're riding along on a muddy trail, rocks, sticks, anything that could be uh, kicked up by the person in front of you or the tires on your own or even, you know, low-hanging branches out there. You want to make sure your eyes are, are covered in those situations. I like to wear and, and recommend to everybody, as does Yamaha, long sleeves, long pants. Uh, cover basically every piece of exposed skin that you can. Uh, there's a reason why there's seat belts in those side-by-sides. I mean, you, you need to wear them just like you would in a car. A helmet. A helmet is a simple thing to protect your protect your head. And I tell you the other thing about it, when it's cold outside, you put that helmet on, it's like nice insulation as well. So those are just some of the simple things that I always like to think about when it comes to safety. Be safe so that you can walk out the door and walk back in the door all in one piece every time. Deer Gear is brought to you by Conquest Sense, Hunting and Dog Sense, Record Rack, Serious Nutrition, 10 Point Crossbows, Perfection Lives Here. Feed your need for speed. The Nitro XRT unleashes speeds up to 470 feet per second, producing 25% flatter aero trajectory, resulting in knock breaking accuracy and unprecedented knockdown power. 
The world has never seen a crossbow this fast, accurate, and compact. The Nitro XRT from 10 Point. Sometimes a tracking job doesn't get done in a day. It unfortunately may take several days. Scott Newby from Yamaha Outdoors experienced this firsthand when he went out on a recent handgun hunt. He just randomly came in from our left, started to slowly work his way in exactly where I needed him to be, exactly where I wanted him to be, and just had to make sure I gave him enough time to you know, get comfortable, get situated, as well as me, you know, making sure that I brought my heart rate down, that I got comfortable with the shot, got comfortable with my shooting position and everything too. And man, right when uh, he started to come off to the left a little bit and had a, uh, had a tree in front of him and started to come right back around to the right, thought it was perfect, everything was good, and slowly just squeezed off that round. Smoked that sucker. I think so. Did you send that near? I mean, just elated overall, and and just jumping up and down inside. Of course, just see him kind of get right back up and and take off to our left, and thinking that it's going to be just you know, just a couple yards, no big deal, no no tracking whatsoever. And so after time passes, getting up to go track him and. Not having that initial sign when you go to where you shot, there's always that voice in the back of your head that just went, oh no, what happened? I mean, there's, there's no worse feeling than not finding your deer. And that was my first. I mean, the, the first one that, I've, that I was unable to find, and it's rough. I mean, it was sleepless nights, you know, and, and just going through the whole entire routine over and over again thinking, what could I have done better? What should I have done better? Because that's the last thing that I want is to not be able to, you know, just find them and you know be able to, be able to just see them, hold them up, and everything. I mean, makes you wonder, you know, what happened to him? Where's he at? Well, the good thing is, we definitely gave it everything we had. To yeah. Try and find him. Yep, we have stomped around every bush we could think of, and. Looking for birds. And like I said, you never know, he may still be alive. He may not be hurt that bad. And yeah. We may see him in another day or two on yeah. camera. I mean, shoot, Wade's out there checking trail cams now, setting up more trail cams, so yep. you never know what he's going to be up to, where he's off to. Yep. It's one of the most painful, difficult situations in a deer camp. Morale is going to drop when somebody hits a deer and you look and you can't find it. I mean, you just can't find anything. Everybody deals with it different. There's no magic word to make somebody feel better. Uh, you know, I always go by the, the old topic and conversation of, you know, if you hunt long enough, it's going to happen to you. You know, and there'll be some guy out on social media on his keyboard right now going, I've never lost a deer and I've done this and I've done this. Good luck. Congratulations. Hunt a little longer and it may happen on the very next time you shot. And if it does, I hope you find that deer because it is a gut-wrenching feeling for hunters that have lost a deer or wounded a deer. And you really hear new hunters stress on it. I want to do right by the animal. I want to make a good shot. They strive that, they practice for that, they spend time in the summer doing that. Um, I'm the same way, you know, if I know I've got hunts coming up, I want to shoot my bow all summer long, I want to get ready. I just, I want to do right by the animal and, and I think every good uh, caring person, hunter in the world uh, wants to do the same thing. That'll do it for us here at Cabela's Deer Gear TV. We'll see you next time. Protect it or lose it. 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 Protect it or lose it.
protect it or lose it. For precise prescription eyewear, Wiley X knows there's no room for error. We meticulously craft our own prescription lenses to fit our high wrap frames. And our ANSI safety rated lenses are tested to uncompromising standards. Nothing but precise. Because precision is everything. Many said that we were just obsessed when we started. That there had to be an easier way to smoke food. As time passed, the Bradley family created a lineup of Bradley electric smokers that has made it easier for the novice or even expert chef to get perfect results every time they use it. Grab yourself a Bradley smoker and take your cooking to an all new level. We plan all year for this. We hone our skills. We have confidence in the gear we choose. We pour over thousands of images and videos. When the time comes, will you be ready? Introducing the all new 4K camera by Stealth Cam. Proven. What does it take to make Evercom deer scent? It takes a deer farmer who raises whitetails. It takes mixing the special blend of Evercom, testing each batch. Smells like deer. And then pouring each container. Each container is cleaned, examined, and packaged for shipping. It takes the finest deer herd and a great team of people to make the best hunting scent available. Evercom, from Conquest Scents. Want to know why the top shooting pros choose HiViz? HiViz has an enormous lineup of sights for every shooting platform possible that are clean looking and easy to mount. Improve your shooting with faster target acquisition and eliminate cross-eyed dominance. HiViz sights are the brightest out there, helping you find your target with ease no matter the shooting conditions. Choose the best, choose HiViz, and see what you've been missing. Nobody likes crawling, creepy, or flying bugs. So ward them off with Sawyer Permethrin. It's more than a repellent. This odorless spray repels and kills mosquitoes, ticks, and more than 55 other kinds of insects. Sawyer, we keep you outdoors. We demand a lot from the products that we use on our adventures around the world. When it comes to keeping things seriously cold, we rely on Angle Coolers, who have for over 50 years kept things cold. Angle Coolers, the original high-performance cooler. I came back from Afghanistan with a traumatic brain injury. I couldn't talk. I still can't talk right. I didn't want to leave the house. Then my wife, God bless her, she got me off the couch and said, hey, enough's enough. You gotta get back outdoors. The hunting gave me a whole new purpose, you know. It sped up my recovery big time. When I was deployed, I trusted Treasure Con, and I still do today. Sergeant Rob Gustafson, U.S. Army retired. Trigicon, brilliant aiming solutions.